The navigation for reports with a lot of pages can become quickly complicated. We have a layout here with four different sections, with each section having multiple pages. How would you build a navigation for this? Would you just use a simple sidebar? Maybe diving them into separate sections? Or hiding them all together behind the button? Or for some cases, the best solution could be to build separate dropdowns for each section. So how complex do we want to go? We are going to look into all four examples, looking at how to build them and what are their advantages and disadvantages. The easiest way would be to use a simple page navigator and put all the buttons into a sidebar. It's very easy to scale, you can just copy paste it on the other pages and if new pages are added, you just have to enable them in the navigator. On the other hand, it can be overwhelming having that many options to navigate. Also, it's unstructured, we cannot see which page belongs to which section. Also, it takes up a lot of space, which could be used for other visuals. And the size is limited to the height of the canvas. We can take the page navigator and divide it into different sections. Here we have for each section an overhead, which is a button. They have no actions, but I prefer them over text boxes because I wanted to use Segway UI semi-bold. And for some reason, text boxes in Power BI don't have this option. Below the headers, there is a separate page navigator for each sections, where only the relevant pages are selected. The gap between the sections is 15 pixels each. I measure them with a shape, placing the sections one after the other. To have a unified scaling, all the buttons have 30 pixel height, which makes a page navigator with three pages 90 pixel tall and a four page navigator 120. This is still quite simple, but it's more structured than a single page navigator. But if we have to add new pages, we have to reposition the sections and resize the page navigators. This sidebar still takes up a lot of room on the page. And in many cases, we need every possible space on the canvas because we want to show as much information as possible. So instead of displaying it all together, we could hide the page navigation behind a button. For that, first we can build a button with rounded corners and having the hover effect. I hide it for now and I'm going to place the different sections next to each other in the top right corner. Here we don't need the background fill for the section headers because they are not used as a divider. So I just remove the fill from the style. And since we have more room here, we can make all the buttons 40 pixels tall instead of 30. Since it's going to be a pop-up navigation, we can put it into a shape. We can add the shape to the canvas, reposition and resize it, change the corners, make the fill color white, and remove the borders. We can also add the drop shadow to make it stand out, and place the shape below the navigation sections. To be able to close the pop-up, we add the button to it, remove the borders, and we will add a cancel symbol to it. For that, I just go to Google and I just copy the first result, go to style and add it as a text and make it 16 pixel large. You can also add some hover effect. We can make it a bit more user friendly. On a lot of websites, if you open a pop-up like this, the entire page gets darkened or blurred out. And if you click anywhere outside of this window, it's going to close the pop-up. So we are going to add a large shape to it, covering the entire page. Let's make the fill black with 80% transparency. Then remove the border and position it in the bottom within this navigation group and make sure that the button, this cancel button, is also in this group. And now that we have all these elements, we can set up two bookmarks to open and close this pane. Let's go to view, open our bookmarks pane. We are going to add two bookmarks, rename them, make sure that they only apply to selected visuals. And then I select the enter navigation group and while it's shown, I'm going to update the nav on bookmark. Then I hide the navigation. I make sure that it's selected again and update the nav of bookmark. Then I show the original button. I select it. 
is an action we select bookmark and it's going to turn on the navigation pane. Make sure that it's below the navigation group. So when you open it, it's going to be covered. You can click on it to see if it works. And here for the button, we can add the navigation of bookmark as an action. And we do the same for the background. We can select it, go to action and add the nav off. Now, if you click the background or the cancel, they both are going to close the pane. Compared to the sidebars, it saves a lot of space. We can use that area for other visuals. It's also fairly easy to use, but for the user, it means one more click before they can navigate. And when they open it, there are still a lot of options at the same time. From a developer perspective, it's also more work because if you copy it on the other pages, you have to set up the bookmarks on every page separately. For the last part, we copy the entire navigation group to a new page. We can remove the cancel button and also the white shape. We will keep the dark background shape, but make it completely transparent. We still want to have the same effect here. Whenever we click out any of the dropdowns, we want to be able to close the dropdown with that. Instead of the section headers, we are going to add a bookmark navigator here. Let's start with creating four new bookmarks name them accordingly to the sections and also group them. When you book them, you might have to reorder them. Make sure that you have the same order what you have here on the page. After that, we are going to insert a bookmark navigator. Go to bookmarks, add the nav special countries bookmark, and we will format it in the same way we have this button here. Then we are going to resize it, go to properties. The height is going to be 40, four times the section width. And one section width is 160 pixel wide. Four times that is 640. Then go to visual grid layout and remove the padding. Now we can replace the headers with the bookmarks. Remove the previous headers. Then we can format the bookmark. Go to style, font color. Remove the borders, make the default text larger and semi bold Make the fill 100% transparent. Then go to hover state, add some hover effect, make the text white and add the gray background fill. We skip the press state and in the selected state we have a dark font and a darker background fill with 0% transparency. For the dropdowns, we can add the default light gray fill. We have a light hover effect and the current page has a dark background fill. Now we can set up our bookmarks. We are going to show only the first dropdown, but make sure that you select all the dropdowns, including this background shape. And then we go one by one through the bookmarks, only for selected visuals and click update. Then go to projects, do the same, hide overview, show projects on the bookmarks only for selected visuals and update. Same for quality check. And same for risk analysis. Now, if you click through the bookmarks, you can see that they work. But one bookmark is always open, so we want to have a state where all the dropdowns are closed. We are going to create a new bookmark for it. It's going to be nav default special countries. And in this case, all these bookmark elements, the four bookmarks and the shape are going to be hidden and update the bookmark only for the selected visuals. Then we will add the bookmarks to our bookmark navigator, go to bookmarks and click on allow the selection. And then on launch the selection, we will select nav default special countries. Now, when you click on one of the bookmarks, the drop down appears. And if you click on it again, it disappears. And we will set up the same thing for this background shape. Select it, go to actions and replace the bookmark. So if you click on the background now, the dropdown disappears.
if none of the bookmarks is selected, we have no indicator which page we are on. So for that, we can add a shape to it to indicate which section is it, the active section. Let's add the shape. Let's go to style, remove the borders, make the fill light gray. And we are going to reshape it, properties. The height is going to be 40 and 160 width. The same size like a bookmark button. And now we are here in the overview section. So we are going to align it on top of the overview bookmark. Then make sure that you change the layer order and put the shape below the bookmark navigator. So whenever none of the bookmarks is open, you can still see which section is the currently active section. And then you open it and you see which page is active. In my opinion, this is the most user-friendly and most elegant solution. But from a developer perspective, it's a lot of work because you have to set up all these bookmarks on every separate page. And yeah, who wants to do that? But if you consider that you might build a report like this for weeks or even for months, the work ratio to the entire work is not that much. And also the user is going to work a lot with this report and the little changes like this can be very much appreciated. If you have any other suggestions or ideas how to build the navigation for complex reports, please leave a comment. Other than that, this is it. So see you next time.